So, 52 playing cards. We're choosing 13 cards. A hand of 13 cards is dealt. And we want to know the probability there are going to be at least 11 <coughs> spades in that hand. Right, it's a probability. So, start it the way we've always started these. That means it's a fraction. The number on the top and the number on the bottom. The number on the... Which is easier to do, usually? Numbers. The number on the bottom, which is... The no restrictions number. Okay, if there are no restrictions on this hand, how many ways are there of choosing these 13 cards from the 52? 52 choose 13. So you're going to say, Patrick? Okay, that was correct. Okay, for that one down there. Now, we've got to work out the top then. The top is going to be the at least 11 spades. <coughs> Now, we had a, it's, this links in a bit with the last question and the technique we used on that question with the word probable in it. Um, how could we get at least 11 spades? 11 spades. Yeah, we can either have... There are three scenarios. We've got different scenarios here. The scenarios are 11 or 12 or 13 spades. Okay? And we'll look at all of those scenarios in turn, and for the word or, we will add. add. Okay, yeah. So, let's look at 11 spades first of all. How many ways are there in a hand of 13 cards of getting exactly 11 spades? 11 spades and two others. So that's a good comment, yeah. So I'm choosing 11 spades... How what? To see these 11 spades, where have they got to come from? The 13 spades, yeah. So the 11 spades is choosing 11 from 13. That is the 11 spades from the total of 13 spades. And then what else is happening at the same time in this hand of 13 cards? <coughs> We are choosing two others from 39 others. Those 39 are the ones that are not spades. So we have that and we multiply together because we have to have this, the 11 spades and the two which are not spades. Now I've got that as a number here. It's about 58,000. I've got 57,000. 798. Does anybody <coughs> agree with that? Okay, someone's nodding, I think. Thank you. Okay, next scenario then. 12 spades. Now we've done the first one, which is a hard one, really. We can probably work out what's going to come next. Can anybody tell me? Lucy, do you want to tell me what I'm going to write down for the 12 spades then? It's going to be very similar to this one here. Yep. And what's this one going to be? It's going to be a one then. I'm not quite sure I hear what you said for the top one. Yeah, that's right. It's still the 39. We've still got 39 that are not spades. So I'm choosing 12 of the 13 spades and one of the 39 other ones. And I've got written down here that works out to be 507 ways that can happen. And then the third scenario... It's the 13 spades scenario. Um, Gracie. Go on, what are we going to have for the 13 spades scenario? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you do 13 choose 13? Is that what you do? Yeah, I've got to choose 13 <coughs> spades from 13. And then you don't choose any more. I don't choose any more. That's right. Now, you could leave it like that, or you could put in... I choose none from 39. Any time you have a, anything choose naught, that's always one. So effectively there, you're timesing by one. So that bit there is optional. I saw you tapping away on a calculator. Do you have an answer for that one? Just one. Just one, yeah. Anything choose itself is one. Anything choose naught is one. Yes, 
Yes, you could do. You could just use logic and say that as well. Yep. Or we can follow the same pattern. Either way works. Okay, so we've got an or, which is adding then those three together. And that will give us our top number. And I reckon that added up is 58,306. So, our probability is that number over 52 choose 13. Now, off the video earlier on, we, I asked the class for some predictions on what this probability is. The first number that came up was 0.1, which is 1 in 10. Then we had a 0.14. I'm not mentioning any names here. We had a 0.05, which is a 1 in 20 chance. Then we had a 1 in 1,000 chance, and we had a 1 in 10,000 chance. Has anybody got this mm. number. Go on, Beth. Um, 9 .18 .18. Okay, which means that 9 is the 8th thing after the decimal point. Okay, now if on your calculator you do, well you could probably just press the reciprocal button, if you know what I mean, you've got the x to the minus 1 button on your calculator, what do you get then? What number comes out? So on this calculator, it would be, I saw it a minute ago, up here it would be on that one, the x minus 1. What do you get when you press that? Roughly, what's that number? 10 million. 10 million. Okay, I've got here, yeah, 11 million. Yeah. It's roughly a 1 in 11 million chance of happening. Okay. So the closest answer, I suppose, was the person who said extremely small. Okay, we'll go with that one.